the most interesting part of working with data frames is to be able to import your own data frame from some website and then take a look at the data and do some manipulations on that. So we'll do that interesting portion in this video where we will be importing some stocks data from a website. So if you want to familiarize yourself with stocks, the Yahoo Finance website is a great website. And what you can do is if you just search stock data Yahoo, you can come down to the Yahoo historical prices and you can search whatever uh, company you want. Say you want to search for Google, you can just scroll down to the historical prices and it's basically going to be the same. And if you come down to historical prices, here are some of the historical prices. So it's going to give you your open, high, low, all of those things. And here is your start date and your end date as to how you want to take a look at the data from what time to what time you want to take a look at it. You can have daily, weekly, monthly, dividends only, all those sorts of price movements. And you can download this data if you do download the spreadsheet. And it's going to bring you to this page where there is going to be records. And each record is going to have multitude of commas. The commas are going to separate out the different cells. So the first cell here is going to be our date. The second one is the stock price, say the opening, and then possibly the closing or the midday, those sorts of things, quantity and those sorts of things. The commas separate out different cells here and the enters here are separating out different records in the table. So that's how you can do your download of it. Once you have downloaded it, you can just click copy and you can exit out of that and come down to your R studio where you can have some data frame we'll call it stock and you can do read.csv and you can copy and paste whatever that you have created using the Yahoo API and you can paste it here and then when you run this you'll see that it has opened up the top 10 of the records that were there so the first 10 records have been printed out now make sure you don't just do stock and then hit the run button because if the data set is quite large maybe a couple of gbs or maybe just uh, you know a couple of uh, 100 mbs or something like that the memory might run out meaning that it's going to take a lot of time for you to print out all of that data so if you use something like a head function the head function will just uh, take a look at the top six values if you get rid of this extra parameter that we have placed which is 10 if you place 10 or say 100, it's going to print out the top 100 values. Now let's move on to our inserting and updating records. So we're going to first do a update of the volume of this record, which if you take a look, falls as the fifth row and it falls under volume. So if we do stock and we go to the fifth row, which is five comma, and then we go one, two, three, four, five, six volume. So five comma six is now going to be set equal to, let's say, 190,000 volume. And then we'll print out headstock again. Now you can see that our value has been changed to 190,000 from the before value, which was this value right here. So that's the simple updating from the matrices section that we saw. We can also do that with a whole vector. So we can go five comma, and then we can create our vector. And this vector is going to be composed of, let's just copy this value here, and it will help us see it quite easily since it will stand out in any of these this repeated date so if we put the date in strings and if we put the rest of the values in and you might be thinking this is not going to work this is not going to work because our vectors can hold only one type of value well even though our vectors can hold only one type of value and we have specified different types of values here it's going to coerce it into a single type of value so it's going to find a certain data type which can handle all of these so here we have a string and we have a numeric how do we handle it the way it's going to handle it is it's going to put it into a character type so all of these are going to become 
characters so it's going to become something like this inside r and when we add it on to our data frame it's going to come back to being the correct numeric type that's supposed to be there with that we can go ahead and do our update of the fifth record and when we do that we don't get any errors that's good and let's do a head and you can see that at the fifth value here there's a 36 37.68 and there's a 37.77 all of these values have been added in here and you can see that for some of these the precision has slightly increased and don't worry about that you can change around the options of how you want to display your data frame and the values later on so the important thing is how we can do the update here and you can see that for our fifth record we have done the update and as you might suspect we'll also do a insertion so we'll add a record we're going to do stock and we're going to apply our rbind function and we're going to rbind this vector and this is going to be one of the parameters and it's going to pick up all the columns we're going to rbind it at the third position and after that it's going to pick up the rest now if we execute see that works let's take a look at our data and at three you can see that there has been an insertion of our data in here so this is simple binding in another row we can also do binding another column and we all know how that drill goes so we just replace this with a c and say we're going to be working with the first 10 of these so in that case you would then create a vector which has 10 values and have another column name here we're not going to go through that because we already know how to do that and that's just a cumbersome practice so thank you for joining me here and as a treat let's just take a look at this whole data set before we leave and you can see all of these beautiful values have been placed here for us